So, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Paul Sellers, as you can recognize my voice. I'm in Germany, in Berlin. I'm here at the Brandenburg Gate, and um, just taking a look around at the people. So this is us. So all the embassies around here, and um, it's quite exciting. There it is, the famous gate that opened up between East and West Germany not that long ago, and it's a symbol of peace and unity today. Um, many people come to have a sense of alliance that was the unity, uh, not just of the East and West part of Berlin, but really the uniting of, uh, of a, a sense of European unity altogether. We're here um, partly in this mall uh, precinct area just to celebrate the Chinese New Year. And uh, so there's um, a lot of celebration here. We're wishing everybody a happy and cheerful New Year and inviting everybody in to celebrate with them. So we got different craftspeople um, showing what they have made, how they make them and so on. Uh, here I am in Berlin and I came across a gentleman carving. This is like icing on the cake for me to see a man, a creative man who's skilled with his hands and uh, to enjoy Seeing his celebration really in this way, you know, an incredible skilled hand. How long has he been carving? Uh, I need to ask you. Okay. Twenty-eight years. Wow, that's a long time. Very skillful. It's a complicated uh, city. It's a very complicated city. With complicated personalities and complicated life. This is the um, remnant of the wall that separated East and West Germany. This is one side of the wall. And then we cross here to the opposite side of the wall. You see the east side gallery. Uh, it's been quite fascinating, interesting to see. And um, th this is that was the border between the two halves. Actually, the border was on the other side of the river here, but there was no room to build the wall, so they built it this side. And um, it's been quite a fascinating journey. Uh, I've enjoyed my visit. And I've enjoyed Berlin very much. It's really uh, quite an amazing city and um, I think these historical trips, these trips into the past are important because they're landmarks in the history of who we are as a world people and um, you know there's so many things that divide us especially walls and uh, but the walls are not always obvious and I think that's the important thing to remember is that it doesn't necessarily take a physical wall to divide us, it can be just as simple as our attitude. And I think that's what's depicted in being here in in East, uh, in Berlin, uh, East side and West side, um, is that it's taking a look at what divides us. Uh, and, um, you know, I see that in all areas of life, work, healthcare, all manner of things, the things that divide us are really quite amazing. 
and most of it's rooted in fear, I know that. But, and fear of losing what we actually don't have is often the truth. But I've enjoyed my visit to Berlin and it's not a, at all a, a negative city, it's really a vibrant, positive force, I believe, uh, for the common good of man, really. This is just to say thank you to Berlin and Germany and I'm looking forward to being home. I'm just finishing up a drawing for the, uh, just a sketch really, of how I envisage my new workbench is going to come, my uh, garden bench, not work, I've got workbenches going over my brain after making a plywood one. So this is just a sketched out idea and then from here I'll pull together the pieces and work out how I really want this to look. So whatever shape I'm putting into this now may not end up in the final one. Usually though it does. Usually I've got something settled in my brain. I want my back back to hit this section here. Vertical slats always work well, but horizontals never really work that well on a, on a for a backrest because the the boniness of your spine hits them wherever they are. So unless you really have a an S-shaped back on there with a decent hollow in it, it's going to hurt your back. So Vertical slats always work best on chairs, benches, this kind of thing. This is my garden bench coming together. I've got a little bit of shaping to do on some of it, but I do like uh, how it looks and feels. It's coming nicely. When you're working on a, a project like this, and um, you can start checking yourself as you go, making sure it does feel comfortable. This even feels comfortable. I've got to do the round in the bottom of the seat yet, so on the side rails, it's going to have a, a scallop like this on the top, and then these will follow that shape. And um, I'm going to, I, uh, I cut some. Um, the slats of, uh, or the rails, I could only get the one and a quarter inch, I think it was, from windowsill material. So I bought some windowsill material and ripped them and that left me with these uh, two and a half inch or whatever they are, um, pieces with a round on the front. And I thought, well, that would look nice generally because you wouldn't have that um, hard edge on your bum as you sit down. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to round the edges, so that's an additional feature that I've decided on, that I hadn't decided on before. So there's a few little things that I have to do yet, but I'm very close to putting this together. I'm using draw bore pins, uh, so I'm going to be doing that on this one and on the oak one that I'm finally going to make. But this back hits exactly where I want it to, and I'm sure it will for other people. So when I get my scallop in, that will naturally push my bum forward and I've got a slouch position that I feel very comfortable in. So these are what a prototype does and this is why we often prototype when we can. When you're in business it's not always that easy to do a prototype. If you're making a one-off piece for somebody it's not always that easy. That's very time consuming to do. But what you can do is you can just uh, glue and screw or just screw the parts together. You don't have to do the joinery always. You, you can just cut the parts, nail them, screw them, whatever, uh, just enough to get them together sufficient for you to test it out and sufficient for you to show a customer and say this is what you're going to get. Uh, it's an expense but you, it's not like you've lost the wood. You can still work the wood into something else. So there are good reasons for doing prototypes. I love prototypes. I think it saves a lot of time in the end even though it, it, it takes time to make them. This is where I'm working out the um, the shaping here of the leg. 
the front post, front leg, in relation to the arm that's going to go across here. I don't want um, a, the arm is actually going to go in here. This is going to be the finished height of it, but I'm going to cut off one inch, do a two inch deep mortise in this side, and then a two inch mortise into the back here to take this tenon that protrudes through here. So. So what size tenon? I'm going to do a big beefy tenon on this, so I'm going to make this a, a one inch tenon I think. There is no hard and fast rule on things like garden benches, you can just go about with anything you want. But we do have guidelines that we try to work to in terms of sizing for tenons and such. I don't know why I marked that top one on there because I'm going to have to cut this off anyway. This is my favourite part, is the decision making really on, on stuff like this. How do, I, how do I do a few things? I'll go ahead and cut that top of that post off really first I suppose. When I'm uh, walking along in the snow and the iciness this morning, I was just thinking <clears throat> yesterday I kind of launched a little bit more information about my um, workbench made from plywood, the bridge I called it, because it bridges the gap between machine woodworkers and hand toolists. And, and I think sometimes we lose track of what that means um, but I, I make I have no regrets in doing what I did because I felt like it was important for us to be more all-encompassing and I think it's important to find the balance really of what uh, woodworking is about mostly it's about joinery and uh, how do you make good joints and how do you how do you keep on track? How do you keep your joints pristine and crisp and and so on and and then you know here I come along. You got to have a workbench. You've got to have 15 hand tools. You can make just about anything with a good bench. 15 hand tools, three joints with a few variations, only slight, and it kind of puts everything in perspective and of course now you know there are woodworkers copying what I do and what I say you know that a few years ago we're selling tools in Cincinnati Ohio or something you know and I, I think it's nice that we're seeing this shift uh, I don't think the shift is big enough I think it's still too small to be an entity but it's definitely bigger than it was in my experience when I first went to America I never saw anybody using hand tools that doesn't mean nobody ever used hand tools <coughs> it just means that it became so imbalanced and uh, I felt like something needed to change and I started on a, a one-man campaign going to the woodworking shows and and demonstrating hand cut dovetails and I think that that was uh, that was where I saw the biggest change was when I uh, when I started demonstrating how to cut hand cut dovetails or how to sharpen a plane and just the simplest things really or what seemed simple to me and uh, I remember oh there's a swan going over some swans hope I got them did I no I suppose what what I'm really saying about the bridge the bench the plywood bench is uh, I felt like it was a an important step for me to be able to present something to people that they could embrace and uh, 
and I think it's a long or a lifelong bench. I don't think it's a, a rinky dink thing and it's very very solid so I'm, I'm just saying that we can have solid workbenches from solid wood or we can have it from plywood and they both work. What does it matter if it gets you started? I'm on my way to um, Swindon to pick up some oak for my garden bench and um, I thought I'd take you on the trip with me a little bit and see how we do uh, with the timber suppliers it's an, a place that supplies I think only oak and it imports from Europe, mainland Europe and um, so I'm on my way there uh, I've bought from this company before uh, and found them to be very helpful and um, willing to supply large and small orders and um, the prices have always been favourable we'll find out today when I get there so I'm on my way through Wiltshire to Swindon I left about half an hour ago and I'll be there very soon uh, we've had snow the last few days and um, with the remnant of it now the temperature is 9 degrees so we'll see it fast disappear over the next day or so and we've got rain forecast for the next five or six days but we enjoyed the snow when it came yeah are you going to join me on this making this garden bench i think you'd enjoy it i think it'd be a great addition to your back garden you're at the front of your house sit out there actually I, I did get everybody to try it this morning before i left to go on this trip to see how they felt about the comfort of it and they all felt it was most comfortable, which a lot of garden furniture is not comfortable, no matter which way you slice it. I'm glad I got this trailer, it's not very big, it's about 4 feet by 8 feet inside. So it's plenty big enough to carry everything I've, I've got. Mostly wood doesn't come longer than 8 feet, but I go on top anyway. I made a platform with a tarp on top of that, so I can actually strap directly on top. So I can take up to about 12 feet long which I never need anything 12 feet long. One of the projects I really enjoyed was making that um, plywood workbench. Uh, I, I don't know why I enjoyed it, maybe it's because it's so radically different than what I normally might do and, uh, and, and maybe because the result was that it was so very solid and um, you know it's always nice if you can uh, if you can get a design to come together as solidly and as I guess attractively for whatever reason you know many reasons for attraction one is that it can look good the other is that it can be fit for purpose one is that you feel attracted to it because it's so doable so I yeah I did pick my wood out I've got some 4x5 oak for my legs and then I've got my slats and I've got slightly thicker for my rails so I've got everything that I wanted picked out so I'm ready to strap it down now was what I could get and then some one and a quarter kind of material because in a, some has cracks in it which I bought on purpose because he gave me a discount and I can work around the cracks anyway so I have everything I need to make my garden bench here 